Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a fairly old team game between Ivor Kane Sato versus... Okay, I can't actually read that. Sorry, one of the players has a bunch of clan tags right now, and I gotta just... Okay, apparently the player list won't widen for me. Well, one of the players is Fred, and we saw Ivory King versus Fred in a previous game. Okay, it's El, Tr El Torero, that's who it is. So yeah, Ivory King and Sato versus El Torero and Fred. Like I said, we saw Ivory King and Fred play last time I casted, and it was also on Geyser Plains, which is where we are now. I'm Shadow 363 again, your commentator, and let us begin. So... Oh, sorry, it's Warlock. Not sure why El Torero was listed in the... On the replay. Anyway, so Warlock and Fred. Presumably one of these is just a name change, an alias. Anyway, Warlock and Fred are starting on the west side of the map, while Ivory King and Sato are starting on the east side of the map. And Ivory King very quickly going for Light Vehicle Factory. Sato has not built a factory yet. He's apparently planning to take these metal extractors, while Warlock has built a shield factory, getting some dirt bags, while and Fred is building a tank factory, going more for a support player there. Tank factories are typically used for supports because you can't build as many units early on. The units are just more expensive. And he is definitely going for support. Getting a Reaper, he's relying entirely on Warlock building up an army to blockade anything that Ivory King and Sato is going to throw at them just to make sure he gets his Reaper up. Because Reapers can one-shot most units. Other units about the same cost, they can't, but they're extremely powerful regardless. And Ivory King and therefore Sato has seen what's going on. Ivory King is planning on going towards the south, and so is Sato. Warlock has a bandit just around here to double check, seeing if any builders are going towards the south. These metal extractors are very important, so you can see due to their value. While, as we can see, Ivory King is going southeast towards the less valuable extractors, but he's still going to be taking some of them. And the bandit will see the commander going towards the southeast, and presumably going towards the south. Looks like Ivory King's telling Sato to get towards the south. He's not bothering it himself. He's going towards the southeast instead and trying to get some defenses for it. Shield Bot Factory being built for Sato at the middle of the map. Very risky there. He's going to have a hard time defending that, but it is also going to be a nice way of pushing map control once he gets a few more units out. And going for Outlaws, going for the Dirt Bag as well. Now, this is an older version of the game where Dirt Bags could only block vehicles. They couldn't actually block bots. So at this point, it's going to be effective against the Reaper, not so effective against the Shield Bots. So Warlock and Sato basically are about even, but Ivory King and Fred can be blocked. Their units could be blocked by hills from those dirt bags. That's something that they're going to have to watch out for. Something neither player seems to have taken advantage of, though. We don't see any dirt bag hills in front of either factory. No, none of them have... Actually, wait. No, it doesn't look like it. Not sure why Fred is saying ARG, but something apparently is happening there. Anyhow, Fred is trying to expand to the center, not being able to successfully do so. I expect that Fred and Warlock are going to try to take the north. It's a bit harder to do. There's, you get less metal per extractor, and it's a much wider area to defend than the south is. Which is why the south is so valuable, and as you can see, Sato has already taken the most valuable metal extractor on the map, while Ivory King is... Probably going to take the second one from the looks of it, sending his commander over, and yes, he could very well be doing so. While dirtbags are actually not being used, I'm kind of surprised Sato is not using the dirtbags to completely disrupt Fred, and the Reaper is out! I don't care what Blue Oyster Cult says, there's very good reason to fear this thing. Because, like I said, it will one-shot everything. It is true to its name, it kills whatever it encounters, pretty much. Also, this is back when Outlaws actually dealt quite a bit of damage when they hit. Not that it'll likely matter, because the Outlaw is going to die pretty soon. As soon as the Reaper hits it, at least. But Slashers are in place to try to deal with it. There was advanced warning. Ivory King was well aware of this coming. And the Reaper is much more concerned about the Outlaw. Not able to hit it, though, but very close. Very, very close. Able to two-shot that leveler. And if it mi hit misses, though, unfortunately, Reapers do not have, as you can see, particularly fast projectiles. The one weakness that they have is that they can't easily kill things that are moving quickly. But that outlaw is gone, and... Okay, maybe Blue Easter Cult was right. That Reaper actually is the thing that's the most afraid at the moment. Very clearly. Now, that being said, 
once it gets repaired up, it will be able to deal quite a bit of damage, and it hasn't actually lost anything. There's a bit of repair time and cost, but not much has actually been lost as a result of this. More Kodachi's being built up as well. Now, Fred is just going for a bit more of a harassment focus. He's getting up some support units for that Reaper. Granted, Kodachis are, at least in 1v1, more often used as your opening a raider, but given that this is 2v2, your ally can go for the raiding forces and harassment forces. Now, speaking of harassment forces, we see that Orochi is coming in to try to take out... Trying to take out the Reaper, only getting an outlaw. Admittedly, that's still pretty powerful, but getting that outlaw, that's not huge. Now, another Roach is up for Warlock. That was Sato's Roach, by the way. The Reaper coming in, able to get rid of these Slashers without too much issue. Taking some damage in the meantime, but one-shotting all of them. And they have to move away out of the way, and they can't attack while moving. So that completely eliminates their biggest strength. That Reaper, able to... Oh, unfortunately, targeting the wrong one. The Bandit, nice support there. Covering for that Reaper and taking out that slasher before it deals any meaningful damage and that last slasher going down this reaper however it is at a third of its health left able to get rid of this laser turret no problem and like i said even with a roach not able to get rid of it especially with fred's commander repairing it this entire time the shield bot factory about to go down now ivory king he is taking it a damn solar collector's on fire i guess the kodachi must have missed trying to get something away from there anyway because the Kodachis do set things on fire. That's how they attack. They have an napalm bomb. And this Reaper at a third health, but able to get rid of the Shield Bot Factory. Sato has lost a lot of his potential to do anything on this map in this game. However, now so has Fred losing his commander. Now, Warlock's commander operating his great support for the Reaper. And the Reaper finishing off that Ravager. But these Ravagers are actually resilient enough that they can stand up to the Reaper, especially in large numbers, and for cost pretty well. The Reaper costs 850, the Ravagers cost 250. Now, with support, it's not as easy. Obviously, with support, that Reaper will have no problem. But on its own, it's fairly difficult to deal with. And these Kodachis not being migrated well at all. Kodachis do not have to stay in the fight when they fire. They can fire and run away, and they really should. They don't have the health to actually go in and continuously take damage from things. Like lasers, both these Kodachis are going to die unnecessarily. They were just waiting to reload when they died. That was unfortunate. However, Ivory King is losing his factory as well. Neither, doesn't look like either player is actually building up any more factories. Both players on the east side team are completely out of factories. They have no way of building more units. And their commanders, I think, are... No, their commanders are alive. Ivory King's commander is right here. And Sato's commander is also here. They're just going for a commander push, trying to do what they can. Shotgun and auto shed, so power shotguns with auto repair system. Energy cell, not really useful for this commander build because he's not worried about resources. Ivory King, on the other hand, just energy cell going for a straight resource commander, was not playing and doing a push, and getting rid of the shield bot factory, so Fred's the only one in this game with a factory left, and he also has a Reaper, which is almost completely healed, actually. Ivory King's base has gone down. He just needs to go along southeast to south, and that will be game. That will be it. But it doesn't look like he's planning on doing... Oh, what am I saying? He is doing exactly that. One Well, wonderful for Fred. That's exactly what he needs to do. Now, on the other hand, his heavy tank factory going down right as the Reaper comes out. Perfect timing for that Reaper. But even then, without any support and against fairly powerful commanders, it's going to do what it can, but Reapers have a long reload time. Now, on the east side of the map, Fred's Reaper is doing a great job, and on the north side of the map, Fred has taken all of that. Now, Warlock has very little on the map, actually. So we can see Warlock is basically... Yeah, his... His assets are this stuff in the southwest side of the map, this metal extractor, this laser turret, and this convict. That's it. That's Reaper doing what it can, but against two commanders, one of whom is at level, well, just about level three. At level two, the other one at level one. The immediately level one commander has no weapon of its own. But still, the main strength was that it was being repaired at the time, this Reaper over here. And Sato losing all of his resources. Now, Fred... On the other hand, does have this metal up here, but that's about it, actually. That's all he has, these metal extractors up here, and like I said, they aren't particularly economical. Now, there are a couple that are economical, but they're the ones that are, except for this one up here in the very, very north, the riskier ones to acquire and hold on to. Now, Ivory King and Sato are actually doing a decent job rebuilding. In fact, with the reclaim, they will be able to rebuild their factories fairly efficiently, though Sato appears to be more concerned about building defenses over in the center of the map and south of the map as well. This Reaper able to get rid of the defenses over here, and Sato losing his static income completely. Losing all the static metal income, or very soon will be. This last metal extractor is all he has left. 
And the Reclaim, that's the other thing he has. But that's about it. No, he has four metal. He's got to have something else. Oh, never mind. His commander is providing him a little bit of static metal. He does have a commander that's pushing for him. And that commander at level three is... That is definitely an attack commander. He is very much focused on fighting. Not a bad idea, actually, given that it is a team game. In 1v1, that's a terrible idea. You never want to have your commander going too far forward. It's such a powerful builder unit. Occasionally, it can work if you're against someone who's less skilled, but usually you don't want to do that. And it looks like a light vehicle factory being built up for Warlock, and the base trade is pretty much complete. Click about factory for Ivory King, a light vehicle factory for Warlock, and Fred and Sato have not built their own factories yet, but they probably soon will. Now, where did that... Okay, that Reaper apparently has gone elsewhere. Gone home. It's gone home, and it is currently in the process of morphing. What is it? Oh, morphing into a Goliath the... Wait. Okay, it's another heavy tank. It's mostly an anti-tank heavy tank. Not a bad idea for getting rid of this commander, mind you. But other than that, I'm not sure what good it'll do. Against Cloaky Bots, that's not going to be especially helpful. Now, for Cloaky Bots... Actually, with this arrangement, I suppose Slashers would be useful if they're in position. Scorchers are fairly useful overall, but it's going to be tricky to set up against that. Clickbots just move fast enough that it's hard to actually deal with them with light vehicles. There are obviously options, like I said. Levelers are actually a great option against Cloaky Bots, and I think they have the resources to do it. They soon will, if not now. Definitely with Reclaim they do. But he's primarily going for Ravagers, which against Cloaky Bots, not a great idea. He hasn't scouted out the Cloaky Bots, though. That's the one thing. He doesn't know that there are Cloaky Bots yet. Or, he should know there's Cloaky Bots. This glaive has gone to the north. He should definitely be aware that there are Cloaky Bots. He should need to go in and... There we go, Goliath has set up, and apparently actually not a bad idea. With a slow beam, it is able to completely annihilate a glaive. Okay, that's good to know. I've never actually seen Goliath be used much. It's 2200 metal. You don't build them for 2200 metal very often. Of course, that was a morph due to the veterancy, but still, that that is rare. Now, Goliath itself is not a morph. And in case you're wondering, because this mechanic does not come up very much, some units... Especially the ones in the Kalikabot factory, but tanked bots as well and some vehicles. Ravagers will morph into Reapers, for example. When they get three veterans, you see this little stripes here. The two stripes? If they get three of those, which basically means that, which has done now, that they've dealt as much damage as three times their cost, then they can upgrade. They can basically, they'll go silent, they won't be able to do anything, then you're spending a bit, bit of metal into them, and once that's done, I think it's actually the difference in metal cost between the... Metal and energy between the unit that's there and the unit it's going to turn into. Once that's done, you then have a more powerful unit. This is used commonly for commanders because they don't have the experience requirement for it, but rarely for units because of the fact they have to deal a lot of damage. Mostly you see it used for spider bots in order to get a flea to turn into a glaive to turn into a warrior because warriors are great support for venoms. You don't see it a whole lot for light vehicles or heavy tanks though. And Sato being berated somewhat for having morphed his commander quite a lot. He does have four or three auto repairs, no, four auto repair systems. He is able to deal quite a lot of damage with the weapons he has loaded and able to take a lot of damage and repair from that given the auto repair systems. But it's still not a great option, especially since it's a recom com chassis, which means its health growth is terrible compared to the battle com, which we saw in the last game, which Warlock has now. And those are... Actually, well, Fred's the only one who's lost his commander so far. Of course, this commander goes down. That's 5,000 metal worth of commander. If that goes down, that's going to be huge. And Goliath incoming, getting rid of a lot of these units here. It's going to clear off the communications of the players for now. And that commander coming in, the Goliath in a bad spot, able to start dealing with these glaives somewhat, but the slow beam is the only real weapon it has to deal with them, and even then, that's not enough. It needs support, and the support is not available. Scorchers are coming in, however, that will be useful once it comes in, but the Goliath really wants to get rid of Sato's commander, which it soon will be doing. But these Scorchers need to... Wow! A tick coming in, not even able to get rid of the Goliath. That's how much health it has, because the EMP... You need to EMP past their current health. And it has over 6,000 health. That is going to be near impossible for... That's impossible for a Tick to EMP on its own. A little unfortunate because Tick's normally a great option, but in this case, exceptional situation. And the Goliath doing what it can to deal with this commander. A few more shots actually will be able to do it. 
It's definitely in range to do so, but because it's a recon chassis, it can jump, and that simplifies things for getting out of the way. But it looks like Sato's commander will soon be going down. Just about there we go. The commander goes down. A lot of damage being dealt against this Goliath. But even then, not enough for the EMP to do anything at that range. Scorch took a lot of damage, but that is a lot. That is a huge amount of metal loss. Now, Ivory King, of course, going to reclaim that, trying to get it back, trying to salvage what Sato basically lost for that team. Although Sato, Sato was taking a lot of metal off the map, so it's not. No, nah, it's a bit of a waste still. Unfortunately, he didn't. He used that nicely in that initial base swap, but he didn't continue to use it to deal with this other base that had come in, especially with the Goliath. Basically, tailor made to get rid of large single units like that. That did not do any good. So Sato will need to build a factory right now, and he's not doing so. He is getting a caretaker, which hints to me that he is planning on building a factory near here and just using the caretaker to speed up the construction process. However, he only has nine metal and one energy income, having lost that commander that was clearly a large part of his energy, or at least some part of his energy income, six of his energy income, which out of seven, that's huge. That's 83% of, or no, 82% Two percent of his energy income. Admittedly, a bit of a trivial difference, but yeah, that's not something that's gonna be something small, really. So the Goliath showing its power, taking care of all the units coming in here. Where is Ivory? Stra I mean, Ivory clearly has a strategy of going for cloaky bots and trying to get around that. He does have enough ticks, I think, at this point to actually stop the Goliath. And if he does so, that would be pretty huge. And no, the reclaim is being taken by Fred. The one who probably deserves it the most having been the one to actually kill that commander. But yep, Fred getting all that reclaim, putting it into a spider factory, into fleas. Okay, I think at this point he's just being cheeky because... Seriously, fleas? I can see venoms against this cloaky bots here. Slow him down. Slow him down enough so that the Ravagers and Goliath can actually deal with them, because EMP, they're completely stationary. But, nope, not doing that. He is instead going south and just... with fleas. Actually, he's not building anything at all right now. Fred is, in fact, stockpiling a lot of resources for who knows what reason. Not spending any of them, that's for sure. Okay, there we go. Now he's getting some Venoms out. Getting a few Venoms, a few Recluses, a good combo. Now, this is an older version before Venoms got damaged. So the Venom here, entirely based around EMP, no additional damage. But given the composition of this team, I think that'll work out just fine. Between the Goliath and the Ravagers, that Venom will synergize very nicely. And of course, Recluses also synergize well, but those haven't been built yet. And here goes that Goliath. A hovercraft pl platform being built, so that was the factory Sato was going for with the Caretaker. Not that it did him any good, but that was the factory, in case anyone was wondering. And there goes the Metal Extractor. That's... Well... That's Sato's economy, basically. Now, I mean, if the Reaper wasn't scary enough, <laughs> you better fear the Goliath. That, admittedly, it's not anywhere near as catchy. <sighs> yeah, I can't see that being a big hit. But anyway, the Goliath should be feared, regardless. Regardless of the catchiness of the tune in a 1970s pop environment, that Goliath is destroying everything. Not much can be done against it. The only re the only refuge really for Sato and Avery King is to be is the fact that they're out of the way. The only I should say not refuge consolation. The only consolation to them is that it's over in the southwest corner of the map, and they're not in its way directly yet. They soon will be, and that will be very painful for them, I'm sure. The recluse is going to be helping finish off as well. The venoms are. Venom's Recluses always synergize pretty well. The weakness with Spiders, mostly in 1v1, is the fact that, well, until the Venom damage, it was rather difficult to set up. It's difficult to get set up because you're trying to deal with the opening Raiders and such with only Fleas and Venoms, and Fleas are the only damage-dealing units at the time. But with Venom's dealing damage, it's a bit more even. Anyhow, Warlock is trying to finish the job with his Ravagers, and the Goliath is coming up. Fred's Goliath will be finishing off Cleaning up anything that these Ravagers do not. And actually, these Ravagers getting stopped by a tick. Nicely done by Ivory King. And another tick coming in here. Looks like he's planning on getting rid of the... Well, trying to get rid of the Goliath when it comes in. But he will need a couple ticks for that. However, these Ravagers took a lot of damage. Now, however, so is the Cloaky Bot Factory. And that Cloaky Bot Factory going down. The tick trying to do what it can to deal with this. And it goes down 
from the Goliath, actually, but it does EMP the Ravagers once again, keeping them locked down for another 10 seconds. However, to the north, we see the spiders coming in, and this is game. This is totally game. Ivory King trying to do what he can to harass the north. Not a bad idea. At this point, the only chance he might have would be, I suppose, to rebuild the factories, but I don't even know what factory he could rebuild to get rid of this Goliath here. Shield, maybe, for a bunch of roaches to take it out in one shot, but that would be tricky to do. It would work, but he need to build a shield butt factory, and that would take a minute, and they need to build the roaches, and that would take another second or so. But that's game. Regardless, very nicely played. Neat base trade going on. That was really entertaining. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I will be back shortly with another game featuring me. Because the person I played against really wanted to see how it went out from the side, and he wanted analysis on it. So that will be coming up in just a couple minutes. Stay tuned.